I am Rob. Uh, I've been working in infrastructure automation for over 10 years. And uh, uh, yeah, we'll just keep going. <laughs> so we're going to talk about uh, chocolate today and how that integrates with Puppet. So who's here for chocolate? I'm sorry, wrong presentation. Hopefully you're here for automating Windows. Uh, and so uh, anybody here never used chocolate before? Fantastic. So just hearing about chocolate at this conference. So we, we got some stuff here for you. So uh, how many people in here uh, install um, software, I'm oh, sorry, install Windows and then you don't put anything additional on it? You don't install software or anything? <coughs> One person. You have people to do it for you, right? Right, okay. <laughs> so uh, software management uh, and configuration management, that's a lot of what you're doing with Windows once you have that box. Right, oh, too many buttons. There we go. So lots of different installer formats in the wild. Um, and uh, you have zips and archives, and software comes in that way as well. And then possibly you have your own internal software, and uh, you're deploying them all the same way because you're using Chocolaty. Well, possibly not. You're using something else, which means you have multiple ways of deploying that software. This doesn't like me being all the way over here. There we go. So uh, why Chocolaty? Uh, a lot of it comes into reporting uh, features. It is offline and secure. By default, it comes hooked up to a community repository. That is the first thing that most organizations turn off. Right, and then they set up their own internal repositories. Um, it is very, very flexible, uh, it has to be. Uh, we're dealing with Windows here. Um, and so it does go beyond programs and features. A lot of the things that are out there that manage software for you, they stop at installers, right? So they manage two programs and features. Chocolaty goes beyond that. It does integrate with everything, so if you are using SCCM and uh, Puppet, uh, you're gonna be able to kind of bridge that gap with Chocolaty, so you can actually deploy stuff out uh, for Chocolaty packaging with SCCM as well as you go to move towards Puppet, right? Or if you're using both in tandem, uh, you'll be able to take advantage of Chocolaty in both environments. So uh, Chocolaty's been doing this for over six and a half years. Cost you a couple dollars if you wanted to reinvent Chocolaty. So what is Chocolaty? It is a, it's a universal approach to software management. And so because it's able to work with those uh, native installers, those uh, zips and binaries, right? Uh, all that stuff that you would manage with Chocolaty and uh, it uses PowerShell, so it's using non-proprietary technologies. And uh, we like to say those uh, packages are just fancy zip files. So, question for everybody. Do you recognize this? All right, so that's an iceberg, <laughs> obviously. All right. So what does it represent? So here's a hint, uh, and maybe it's a little old. The picture didn't come through as well, but uh, that is the community repository where there's over 5,000 packages. And uh, the representation of that tip of the iceberg, right? So there are many, many, many more packages that are in the wild that are not on that community repository. And uh, most of them do not cross that line. That line is the line to the internet, right? I know it's a little hard to read, uh, but to kind of put it in perspective, I want to say in 2012 when the community repository had about 1,500 packages, one other organization, just one organization using Chocolaty, already had 2,500. So much, much bigger down there. The, speaking of that community repository, it's been up for six years as of last month. It is uh, community maintained, community moderated. There's a lot of automation there that ensures the quality and consistency of these things and also uh, does virus checks. Uh, so it uses virus total to check these things against 50 to 60 antivirus scanners. Even with all of that, we still recommend that organizations do not use that community repository. And the biggest reason is we want you to be 100% reliable. We want what you're doing to be repeatable. And you just can't when you're using that community repository because it can't be fully reliable. It has distribution rights, copyright law. So a lot of those packages there, they don't actually get to contain the binaries they represent. They have to reach out to the internet to download those things at runtime, right? We have ways that you can reuse some of the logic from the community repository through a process called internalization. There's a way to do that in open source. There's a way to do that in Chocolaty for Business as well. Hopefully the business one is uh, much easier. Otherwise, we're not doing our job correctly. So uh, also, uh, a lot of organizations, they want to be able to control that process so they can trust it. And so for that reason, we're going to recommend that you use your own uh, internal repositories. So Chocolaty comes with a couple features. Uh, oh, we'll start here. <laughs> open source versus Chocolaty for business. Uh, open source is very strictly about package management, which does work well in organizational use. There's probably a lot of organizations in here that are using uh, Chocolaty open source right now. now uh, Chocolaty for Business, much more complete software management experience out of the box. 
uh, builds up on top of that open source experience, brings a lot of better uh, system integration, a lot more features that are geared for organizations. Now, it's worth stating that some of these uh, features you could probably build on the open source side, uh, but some of them would be tremendously hard because we're able to hook into places uh, that you just can't, right? And uh, also visual interfaces. Hopefully the visual interfaces are for your counterparts when you go back, right? Everybody's here learning about command line stuff, but also visual interfaces uh, come with it as well. So this is probably familiar for anybody that's been using Chocolatey. Uh, there's a command line site. Again, six and a half years is a command line app. How many people in here we knew we had a GUI? All right, so yep, uh, Chocolatey GUI. Some people said we named it wrong. We should have called it GUI Chocolatey. I'm not really sure what that's about. But uh, you can also manage from the client side. Uh, those configurations, those other things that uh, you know, may be in places where you're not able to put Puppet, right? Sometimes on the clients. Auto automatic uninstallation. So uh, when you are installing packages that install software into programs and features, we call those installer packages, right? Um, those particular packages, nine times out of 10, when you install one of those, you don't need an uninstall script to remove it. Chocolatey already knows how. And so that's called auto uninstaller. All right, so auditing uh, and reporting. That's pretty important for a lot of organizations, I'm sure. Uh, one of the things that you can do with Chocolate, again, because we go beyond programs and features, you're going to be able to see what's installed, what version, so things like sys internals. You know those things have uh, security findings too, right? Yeah. So being able to see that. Uh, another thing, uh, and we're actually seeing our first business feature here, is package audit. Uh, package audit is going to bring who installed it, when did it get installed, and the history that goes along with that. Uh, if you were to try to do this, uh, you would need something probably very expensive. Hopefully, chocolate is not that expensive. So, uh, and it does this completely automatically. So when you're installing things, uh, it's going to be keeping track of that for you. And so when you have auditors and you're working with auditors, you have all that information for them. Another thing, uh, what's in programs and features only represents about 50 to 80% of the software that's on that box, right? And so traditionally, those inventory reporting systems, a lot of what they look at is just what's in programs and features. Chocolate for Business is gonna make that a little bit more accurate. Uh, you're able to flip the switch and everything that Chocolatey is managing is gonna show up there as well. So if it doesn't already have a managed entry, uh, Chocolatey's gonna create one, right? And so Sys Internals now gets the opportunity to show up in programs and features, yeah. Uh, also, very, very detailed logging. Uh, so other systems, I'm not gonna say who, but uh, it's not Puppet, it's another one. Um, it rhymes with uh, sh mission, yeah, I, I'm not even trying. Uh, so <laughs> Very, very detailed logging, and uh, that's gonna help you a lot of times because invariably in Windows, when you deploy to many, many systems, some of them are gonna fail. Nine times out of 10, it's probably gonna be a reboot, you know, a pending reboot, but you, know, you never know. And so what you're gonna see in the logs is a lot of times you're gonna know what you need to do so that you can move forward. You're gonna have that information available to you. And when you're using Puppet, it'll be right there in your logs. Outdated is another report. And so this actually allows us to see what's out of date on a system. Everything that says false here, uh, is just indicating that there's no reason that we shouldn't upgrade. It's not pinned. So Chocolatey supports the concept of saying, hey, I need to install Java 6. Pin it. And it'll stay on Java 6 until I take the pin out, right? And uh, then I'll be able to upgrade. It'll show up in this report as true. In the business edition, I can also give it a reason because sometimes we forget why we pin things. Right? Or other people get in to look at them. All right, so the package repositories, lots and lots of options here. Uh, you can get started as simply as a file share. You could set up the Chocolatey server, uh, the Puppet module. We're going to talk about some of the enhancements that we're going to be doing to that to make it more modern Puppet. <laughs> so uh, ProGet, Nexus, and Artifactory Pro are what we're going to recommend for most organizations that want to have an on-prem solution. Uh, they support not only multiple Chocolatey-type repositories, but like RPMs, DEBs, Puppet modules. So you actually store your Puppet modules right into Artifactory. I think others are adding that as well. Um, and you can support the idea of package promotion very easily. So you have that one instance, multiple repositories, and just pushing packages around. So my gets another solution. Uh, that's more of a hosted solution. So if you want to pass that our infrastructure off to somebody else, you can get that through uh, private repositories as well. All right, so creating, good on time, yeah. Creating your own packages. Uh, when we talk about package in chocolatey speak, that is an NUPKG file. I call it new package. Some people call it NUPKEGS. I can't get into that. Um, but these are just fancy zip files. So you could actually rename it to an archive, and you could unzip it, and uh, you would see the PowerShell. You'd see metadata in there telling you about the package information. 
you would also a lot of times see these runtime binaries drop right into the package, especially internally. Creating packages, we have Chaco new, and uh, we're not gonna spend too much time on that because we're gonna see it, but uh, that process of Chaco new, when you know what you're doing, right, uh, it's going to take you somewhere between five minutes to 10 minutes to an hour longer uh, to, to kind of create a package. We have another tool called Package Builder that really speeds up that process. So we've heard from folks, you know, I uh, have a lot of uh, software I'd like to get into packaging. Uh, it's gonna take me a little while to do, but once I have everything there, it's smooth sailing. Uh, and so uh, one of the things that we started to work on was this tool called Package Builder. And so every five seconds, it's able to, yes, yeah, very, very fast, create a fully unattended software deployment in about five seconds. And uh, for 70% of the installers out there, it's gonna be fully ready to go. So if I point this to an archive of all my installers, come back in a few hours, it's gonna have everything ready. For the ones that it's not able to fully automate, let's say it's a terrible installer or a, a custom installer, um, what it's gonna do is it's gonna arrange everything and it gives you a to-do list, right? And the to-do list just says, here's the additional things you need to do so that this is fully automated. And uh, that's also gonna be the same. You're gonna get that to-do list for uh, Office and uh, Visual Studio, SQL Server. And the reason is you need an XML file there. Unfortunately, it's not gonna generate that for you. So, but uh, you'll get everything arranged, right? Now, Package Internalizer is another tool that we have. There are manual ways to do this. Uh, when it comes to uh, Chocolatey for Business, this is going to allow you to take advantage of all of that existing logic, but be able to have it become 100% offline and reliable. And so this is going to pull those packages in for you, remove all internet access by pre-downloading everything. Now, one of the, the biggest reasons uh, that we see people really take advantage of Package Internalizer is they want to automate that process so they don't have to think about when new software versions come out. They kind of look at that community repository schedule, and so a lot of the packages there have a core community team that every six hours, or within six hours of that software being released, the package is up, right? So being able to, to kind of depend on that schedule. And so they'll set up Team City, Jenkins, CI, or some other type of scheduled task or scheduled job. When that software becomes available as a package, they'll have it internalized, right? And they'll push that up to a test repository, make sure everything's good to go, and then they'll push it off to their production repositories for greater consumption. All right, so some of you have seen this next slide before. So you know where we're going. So we have a lot of questions on you know, this uh, package internalizer, package builder, how does this work? All right, so uh, to introduce my friend here, Shia. <laughs> All right, so package synchronizer, uh, this really allows us to stay in sync with the system. Um, one of the things you're gonna see in open source chocolate when you're using it, if you install a package that installs software into programs and features, uh, it is not you get a bit of a disconnect there, right? And so you can go directly to programs and features and uninstall that software or upgrade it outside of Chocolatey. What you're gonna see in open source is, again, strictly about package management. Expects all those commands to come through Chocolatey, and when they don't, doesn't know anything changed, right? Autosync corrects that. Autosync sees that the state has changed, it knows, and we know that the actual state of those installer packages is what's in programs and features, and so when that changes, the package should change too. So in the image here, uh, we're removing the 1Password package because the 1Password software has been uninstalled outside of Chocolatey. Another side of that is our ChocoSync command. Uh, this is new since the last puppet comp. Uh, this is uh, allowing us to look at all the software not, we're not managing on uh, a machine and uh, run this one command, and it goes through all those uninstaller keys, right, and uh, automatically will generate packaging on the fly right on the box, doesn't go anywhere for this, and uh, brings it all under Chocolatey management quite quickly. And uh, one of the things that we're gonna do with this is once we have package indexes, we're gonna allow it to actually look back at your sources and say, hey, do I already have 7-zip 16.2? And if I do, go ahead and use that. Otherwise, fall back to this generation. I'm gonna touch on this for a second. Uh, so if you do have uh, servers and desktops, uh, you may have non-administrative desktop users, we have a thing called self-service, right? So this allows them to be able to install and upgrade their own software. Package reducer, uh, this is going to give people the ability to uh, really reduce the amount of space usage when you're using chocolate. That lib folder over time is gonna fill up, right? And package reducer is gonna automatically keep that down. Also comes with a choco optimize command so that when you bring it in and you can go through all your existing stuff and it's gonna clean it up, right? And so even when you do drop things inside of that new package, you're gonna see that new package gets deflated down to like three or four K, right? It just keeps what it needs. Some of the other features in open source. 
passing install arguments directly, package parameters. We are going to give you the slide deck. So if you're not following me on Twitter, Fervent Coder, right? No, this will be out later. Um, package parameters, install arguments, uh, those are going to allow you to adjust logic and packages. So if you need to write config files uh, through something you're going to pass in, and for some reason you're not using Puppet to do that, uh, you could do that. Um, or set registry keys or other things. Uh, that's how, where package parameters come in. So you don't have to actually make a different package uh, for each of those things. Another nice thing about Chocolaty, uh, you're able to actually bring in your own PowerShell modules as Chocolaty extensions, and those functions will be loaded up as if they were built into Chocolaty. So if you have any kind of pre-checks or post-checks or things that you might do, you can bring all that in. So like cert certs and ins installation of certs. Um, that way you don't have to build that logic into every single package you have it in one place. Um, <clears throat> So who here has secrets that they pass through eAML, right? You want to keep those secrets out of logs. Right? And uh, there are ways to do it in open source. In Chocolaty for Business, we make it dead simple, right? Uh, we have install argument sensitive, package parameter sensitive. Those things are guaranteed not to show up in any logs. The ubiquitous install directory. So instead of trying to figure out how to pass that uh, directory switch to each different type of installer, you pass one switch to Chocolaty, and it does it for you. If you have any kind of software you want to blacklist, uh, we have the ability to do that uh, through the uninstall of a non chocolatey managed software. Package Throttle allows us to slow things down. And of course, you get access to support. Now, uh, there's also a workshop, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this. So this workshop, would I say that anybody that's gone all the way through all these exercises will be pretty much an expert in chocolatey by the time they're finished. Now, if you don't have time to write all of that down, uh, when you do run Choco New in the latest version, there's a to-do list at the bottom of that has a link to this. So uh, this is great when you're bringing new folks on board. Uh, you just point them to that and say, come back tomorrow. And they'll go through all the exercises. And, and uh, by the time they're done with it, they're going to be an expert too. Uh, on the roadmap, uh, we have a central management UI that we're building. It is going to have a nice dashboard right along Puppet Enterprise where you can see the state of software inside of your organization. Right? With that, we're also adding a console probably similar to pipelines in a way, so we won't talk about that. Uh, also, Chocolate Deploy, uh, from being able to run chocolatey commands against remote systems. We now have Bolt, so we don't need to talk about that either. Um, WSA, Windows Nano Support. Uh, we're looking to add Nano Support probably early next year. Um, there's a bit of rework to do to support that environment, so that's kind of where we're going with that. <clears throat> GPG signing, authentic code signing, those are things that we're going to be adding in. Then a code signing is much more beneficial for organizations that kind of want to limit down what packages can be installed, kind of put authentic code signatures on it. Pack validation, that's kind of interesting. So does anybody in here ever deployed out to the uh, community repository? A couple people, yeah. So there's a thing called package validator. It actually checks the quality of the package that gets pushed up. So it's checking all kinds of different things to make sure that there's you know, a base level of consistency. And so when you have multiple people in your organization that are creating packages, we're going to be bringing that back to uh, Chaco itself so that when that thing runs, they'll also get kind of reports that show them the quality of what they're creating uh, based on, on some requirements. And in Chocolate for Business, we're going to allow you to actually set up your own rules so you can do that as well. Um, so the bottom thing there says support for other platforms. I don't know if you can see this. I'm just going to touch it. So that's coming in 2018. Uh, Puppet Labs Chocolatey. So uh, this, uh, everything, uh, anybody in here still using Chocolatey Chocolatey for the module? Nobody. Fantastic. Great. Everybody upgraded. Uh, so uh, this is where uh, we integrate with uh, Puppet. And uh, uh, there is full configuration of Chocolatey through that. So you can do everything in your manifest. You don't have to go to execs or crazy other things. So let's take a look at some of these. Uh, we're going to recommend you use the bottom one here. Uh, that has Chocolaty internal location. Uh, this is the only place where we actually need a bare URL to Chocolaty. Uh, every other source when it comes to Chocolaty, especially those URL type sources, is to a, an OData feed. So it's at an endpoint. Package resource. So different ways that you can engage with that source uh, parameter. You actually don't need a source parameter if you've already had everything set up uh, inside of Chocolaty. Uh, in the configuration. Uh, but if you do want to be explicit, you can specify that. Uh, also install options, uninstall options, all that good stuff. So <clears throat> the resource at the top, this is that built-in package resource. You can see when you're using something like Git, that name has the version in it. 
that has to match exactly what's in programs and features. Right? So this is going to have an issue with trying to upgrade, an issue with trying to manage that over time. Right? And so you see there's some manifest maintenance that goes along with that. If you look at the one on the bottom, that's the chocolatey one, right? Um, what's great about that? Platform agnostic. Right? So I can use that same resource you know, for Debian, for Rail, right? as long as that package name matches. Chocolatey source. Uh, and we're seeing in the picture here, it's uh, disabling that community repository, bringing in our own internal repositories. Just one here, but uh, uh, we can do that through there. Config, we're actually gonna look at these, by the way. Uh, we have a full list available, so you can go out to the uh, documentation that we have, see a full list of all the configuration, all the features that you can set. Uh, you can also run uh, Choco config lists or puppet resources to do that as well. Same with features. So there's a lot of things that we're going to recommend for organizations. We've documented that all in our documentation. And actually, uh, on the docs pages, we actually show you how uh, we recommend you set up some of that puppet stuff. So uh, you can get right in and see that. Chocolatey server. Now we want that to use the new puppet-supported IIS module, James. There's a small bug in it. So it doesn't support installing IIS and actually using IIS at the same time. So once that's corrected, we'll get flipped over to it. Uh, and the Puppet Labs Chocolatey module, that's going to be continue to be supported by Puppet and Chocolatey. Uh, for Chocolatey, if you are a business customer, uh, you can come to us first if you want to. But you can also engage directly with Puppet. So you have that opportunity. <clears throat> and new things uh, will be coming. So stay tuned. Oh, and also, Chocolatey Chocolatey, uh, the original thought of that was going to be kind of that edge. Uh, all the brand new stuff was going to be there, and it was going to kind of roll back into a more stable Puppet Labs Chocolatey. We're not sure what we're doing with that yet. So stay tuned while we try to figure out that one. <clears throat> so before we switch over to a demo, we tend to ask people, you know, once you've used Chocolatey, would you go back? Would you go back to those other things that we were doing? And we get pretty good answers here, so it's pretty resounding. Right? That's pretty... All right, so can everybody see this? Is that big enough? Do I need to embiggen it? All right, fantastic. OK, so when we go to create a package, we would call Choco Do, uh, and let's just call it Adobe Reader, right? And if I can spell, this will work out great. So what it does by default, and this is the same as it is in open source, when we run that, uh, we're going to get that default template that gets created. This is a little harder to see, but uh, there's a package here, and uh, there's some files in it. And uh, some more files here uh, as well. And uh, let's just take a look at those real quickly so we can kind of get a nice example of what we got going on here. So I'm going to bump up the font quite a bit here. <clears throat> so this is new in 0.10.8. Uh, so we are adding in uh, a bit of a determination. So when you're an internal organization, you're using Chocolatey internally, we're going to give you the recommendations for the most reliable use of Chocolatey. Uh, when you're going out to the community repository and you're doing a comparison, you see it does not do this, but that's because it's limited by um, distribution rights and other things. Right? And so uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, there's also different types of packages. So we're going to kind of turn you on to the different things that you can create here. So it's not just installer packages. And then kind of walk you through creating the, the contents. So we're going to do that in a second. So we're not going to dive into that. I mentioned the workshop. I did not mention the test environment. The test environment is great when you're trying to test uh, your packages. You want to have a place to do that. Uh, so this test environment supports both Hyper-V and VirtualBox and Vagrant. So you'll be able to test those changes, roll them back, do all that fun stuff that you can do with Vagrant. Last up here, delete the file. All right, so there's also a readme. And uh, you know, if you've seen our documentation, sometimes you've realized that our documentation sometimes has really good you know, conceptual docs. But for the most part, it's very reference. Right? Reference, man, you know, reference documentation is great, as long as you know what you're looking for. So we're working on that, we're working on making that better so that we'll have some more of that. So you get a lot of good uh, pointers here. Uh, you also get a nice link to all the different types of environment variables that you can use inside of chocolatey packaging. Uh, now, uh, there's a before modify and install and upgrade. So these are the scripts that you get access to with chocolatey. The before modify is before upgrade, before uninstall from the old package. You have the opportunity to shut down processes and services. 
Uh, we'll skip that guy for a second. Uh, the uninstall, uh, you can see these are kind of geared towards installer packages a bit, because that seems to be the biggest use. Uh, again, nine times out of 10, probably not gonna need this script, but in case you do want to be uh, explicit, you come in here and uh, say this is Adobe Reader, uh, and then we'll determine if this is executable or MSI. Once we've done that, uh, if it's MSI, we're done. We don't have to figure out those silent arguments. They're already there for us. Um, uh, if it's not, we've got to figure that stuff out. Uh, then there's a link to some of the other types of functions that we can use. But do keep in mind, it is just PowerShell, right? If I can type. I can't type. So, pardon my spelling. But uh, so if this is all you're doing, though, don't, don't do that, because this file's optional. You don't actually need it. Um, but it kind of gives you nice. So there's a license and verification file. They're only related to that community repository. Again, this is the default template. We had trying to meet as many use cases with it as possible. And uh, you can kind of see as you scroll down here, and there's a lot of different, different things you can do uh, with Chocolatey there. So we're kind of walking you through this a little bit more here. Uh, we're going to recommend you drop those binaries directly into the package when you're in an organization. Um, dropping them in, we call that embedding. Right up to a one gigabyte size packages, we're going to recommend you do that. Once it goes above a gigabyte, you might want to pull that off to a file location, right, to a share, uh, and uh, somehow make it available there. You can also download from internal URLs. And so if you're using like Artifactory, ProGet, uh, or Nexus, they support binary repositories. And so that's still reliable because if you think about it, if you can get the package from there, you can probably go get those other things from there too. So, when you're doing those uh, local packages, right, so those local files, uh, using file location, those shares, or uh, the stuff that's embedded right in, you don't want to use install chocolatey package. It wants to download things or copy them to a temp location. Sometimes that's bad. Uh, and so you want to use this other one that's very aptly named, install chocolatey install package instead. Yes, naming is hard. All right, so then there's the new spec. Right, and so as we come down in that new spec, yes, I'm sorry, it's XML. Uh, that was Microsoft's decision when they created NuGet. My bad. Uh, you're going to see in here, uh, there's a package-specific section for all that package-specific metadata, a software-specific section, right? And then we get down to one of the biggest sellers into uh, package management over any other type of software management, and that's dependency management, dependency resolution. Right? And so if for some reason uh, Adobe needed to depend on Java and it needed to be at least version 6, less than version eight, one line, right? And if Java has dependencies, one line or, or however many lines in there for those, and if those dependencies have dependencies, package manager is going to make sure that everything gets installed in the proper order and do that conflict resolution and all that for you. If you can imagine doing this in something else, uh, you kind of get this, the idea of why you would use something like Chocolatey. All right. So this, uh, as we take a look at it, uh, we have uh, a script here, and uh, we have some packages here. We have some installers, right? And so uh, I know they're kind of tiny, but uh, we just got a couple. Let me get a little closer here. And we're just going to ask Chocolatey uh, to look over them and actually create packages for us. And so I'm actually going to run this, and uh, we're going to kind of watch it while it goes. I get to the right place here. Uh, and it is that fast. It's already done, too. And so all we're saying, instead of Chocolate Newman giving it a name, we're saying, look directly at the file, Chocolate You're pretty smart. You figure it out, right? Figure out everything I need. And again, 70% of the time, it's going to be fully unattended in the demo, 100% of the time. <laughs> uh, we can also say, you know, maybe we want to use a, the original location. We don't want to bake that stuff into the package. And so we would add in this optional use original location here. And it's going to do that. And so that could be a URL. That could be the UNC path. Uh, please do not use local host or an admin share. Uh, that's just for the purpose of this demo. Um, this is bad. OK, so don't do that. Now, as we take a look at the packages that it generated, uh, we have the new package. right? And then we have some, um, I'll get a little closer here. So then we have some folders. We have that new package. Uh, that new package is what we're going to need to deploy, right? And so uh, if we're embedding, we have everything we need there. So we just push that package up, and we're good to go. Uh, if we're not, uh, we got to get those binaries up somewhere as well. And just taking a look at the Puppet agent here. I'm just going to rename it to a zip, just so we can take a look in there. All right, so we jump in. There's that new spec. Uh, we also have, yeah, this is tiny. Um, and it, that MSI gets baked right in. We also have that install. And that install script 
uh, tells us how to do the installation, the upgrade, and we're going to depend on auto uninstaller to actually remove that for us. Right, so let's actually take a look at that packaging, uh, just so you can see exactly what it did here. Um, make this a little bigger. Begin. Nope, maybe that was too big. <clears throat> so with Chocolate for Business, when it comes to MSIs, you're not getting a ton there, except it's really speeding up that process for you. It is kind of getting all the uh, things that it needs out. Uh, it, silent arguments with MSIs, they're really not that difficult. In fact, I think that's why people love MSIs. It was Microsoft's attempt at having, you know, the one thing. But there's all these other installers, too. Um, <laughs> so uh, one of the additional things you're going to see the package builder does for you. Anybody in here know what Orca is? Yeah, so uh, you don't need Orca anymore. Uh, it's going to extract out all those MSI properties for you. So you can come get the, uh, the one you need. Uh, you can bring that back up here. You can drop it right into those silent arguments if you want. And I should just copy it and paste it. Right, there we go. And uh, set it to uh, whatever you want, right? And I can't type again. Now, another way that you could do this is leave it out there, uh, and then you could use install arguments. And so instead, uh, let me get this to the top up here, uh, you would run Chaco install, install, thank you, uh, puppet, and that would be dash agent because that's the name of the package. And then you would uh, call for install arguments. And uh, apparently, yeah, I'm going to have to fix that. Uh, we don't want that to go off that far. So let's see how much space we have here. Uh, width is 85, but the buffer is 74. Let's fix that. Yeah, so there's those install arguments. So I could pass it in at runtime uh, there. I could put it into my puppet manifest, right, and then set it. Uh, and uh, whatever I pass here gets appended uh, unless I also add in, and I'm going to start the typing, override arguments, right? And so not only do I get that, but if I'm passing secrets, I get those as well. Another way I can go about it is through a thing called package parameters. Let me see if I can find that. So uh, in our documentation, I'm going to make this bigger as well, except I can do it here. Uh, if you slide down here until you get to um, the how-tos, down in the how-tos, there's one called pass, uh, parse package parameters. It's a really good walkthrough for uh, being able to pass things in at runtime. So if you're passing in a license value, uh, you can actually interact with the user uh, through read host, prompt for choice, all that stuff. The important thing to note, in Chocolatey, has its own PowerShell host. Those are non-blocking calls. So yeah, I'm able to deploy these packages out to both clients and servers, and uh, completely headless environments are going to be able to have those things, and it's not going to stop them, right? And uh, those time out after 30 seconds, and so I definitely want to check to see if I did get it, right? And uh, if I didn't, I could then set it to a default value, uh, or I could actually kill the package, right? So I could throw an error. And I could do things like set that into a license. Uh, I could push that out to a registry key uh, and do other things, maybe pass it to install arguments as well. Typically, uh, when you're using Puppet, you're going to manage all that stuff outside of the package, uh, because that's where the configuration drift gets corrected by uh, sorry, Puppet, right? And so that's a little bit better that way. All right. So I mentioned the configuration. Again, that page on the, is out there. Uh, lots of different things we can do. Uh, I did mention <coughs> for setting up with Puppet, right? Uh, in our documentation, when you go out to uh, the install page and uh, drop over to install, um, one of the things you're going to see is uh, more install options. First, uh, that's where you can see a completely offline install, kind of showing you how that process works. Uh, we're also giving you some pointers on doing that with Puppet, right? And if you go over to setting up the license edition with Puppet, we're going to make more recommendations on the way that you set things. And so you get a good uh, set of documentation here about uh, how you're going to go get that chocolatey package. Lots of documentation written in here. If you need FIPS compliance, that'll be one of the very first features you're going to flip on. Right? So if you're working with government institutions, or you are, uh, you definitely probably need to flip this switch. <clears throat> and uh, configuration, a lot of things we recommend there. Uh, I'll let you go through that uh, at your leisure. But let's uh, switch over. Let's take a look at another package that we created really quickly, just so it's not just MSIs. Right? And so there is a 1Password package here. There's that executable installer in Chocolate. You can figure those out, too. Right? So it's all this was in our setup. Brought in all those good silent arguments that are not only good for ensuring the package installs, but ensuring it installs very well with Chocolatey as well. And so let's actually install that. So right here in the, the folder, uh, if we run low ls, uh, we can see that there is that package, so we'll Chocolate install one password. Oh, by the way, tab completion in PowerShell with Chocolatey, uh, very handy. Um, so we're going to say minus y, uh, which says, you know, auto confirm, which you're going to get already when you're using uh, Puppet. And then source, uh, that's going to be right here in the folder. So we'll just drop the dot 
and uh, take a look here. And uh, it's going to get that installed for us. There it's installed. It's just finishing up. Now, if installing software uh, was the end all be all, we'd be good, right? We wouldn't need something like Chocolatey, we wouldn't need something like Puppet, but that's not true. We upgrade stuff, right? And so let's say there was a security finding with something like 1Password. Well, what do we do? We go get that new version, right? And right here I've gotten in. I don't know how well this is going to, yeah, it didn't work. Yeah, that didn't work last year either. So <laughs> what we can do, uh, and uh, some people saw this last year, we can right click on it and there's create chocolatey package. That brings up the package builder UI, uh, which has had uh, quite a bit added to it. And uh, you can see here, we can do some more customization here. We could actually use URLs to download it, um, but we can specify other options. Uh, under the new spec, uh, there are a lot of options that we can pass. And we can do all this on the command line. It's just, that's a really long command line, right? And so being able to do that customization inside of a UI uh, is particularly helpful. So I'm not going to do it that way. What I'm going to do instead is uh, I'm going to write, maybe not rename it, I'm going to right click on it and uh, create that package without a GUI. And so again, another way that I can really quickly create packages and then be able to push them up to an internal repository. And so there's that package. And uh, we're going to drop that over here to uh, where we're managing it. And I do got time, so. Nah, let's not do that. Yeah, let's do that. Control Alt Delete, which is from this side. It's always fun when you're trying to do that from. There we go. Yeah, we're actually going to go back to that same user. So, vagrant. All right. So, one of the things that we have, uh, of course, is that chocolatey GUI as well. Sometimes seeing that chocolatey GUI helps us visualize things a bit. Uh, I'm going to just show you kind of how the settings are set. Um, and there's nice feature flippers. The folks that work on this have done great work. So. Um, uh, one of the things that's there, it wasn't in the images. Yeah, you get this fun too. Um, that's kind of fun. Um, but also being able to manage your sources. And so uh, it's important to note that in open source chocolate, you have a source uh, and you can have multiple sources, but they're just sources, right? And there's no special connotation about them. Inside of chocolate for business, you can have admin only sources. Those are sources that non administrators would ever see. You can have self service approved sources, and so that non administrators would be able to install and upgrade software from that. All right, so that's. Kind of what that looks like. Now let's go get uh, that puppet man. Oh, actually, uh, we didn't actually upgrade that software that we just uh, brought the package for. So let's do that. So uh, let's see. Choco, uh, let's take a look in our folder here. There's that new version. Uh, instead of uh, just installing it directly, um, we're going to push it, right? So Choco, push, and uh, we're going to push this up uh, one password right, uh, that package that we need to get up there. And uh, then the source that we're going to push that to uh, is going to be uh, right here on the system. I'll do that local hosts. Uh, now one of the things that we need to do is we need to provide an API key. We could actually set an API key uh, or we can provide it. And so this interface of how we push the packages is, is for every single one of the ones that we're going to be working with. So they all have a universal interface uh, for pushing packages to. A lot of them also have uploaders. So you can do it right inside of their uh, tool uh, or inside of, you know, their web stuff. So, so we're going to provide that key. Um, sorry, uh, that's the default key. So uh, change it to whatever you want. Uh, but now, uh, when we query that, uh, we'll see that there's a package sitting up there. So Chaco lists and uh, or search, and then we're going to go for the source. This one's called internal server, so we can just query it directly. <clears throat> and so we get that nice view. Uh, if we want to see all the packages that are there, all versions, we have a way of doing that as well. Uh, if we come over here to uh, take a look at it through the U, through here, uh, it's going to look kind of bare. Uh, it's not as, as fun. Uh, this one's actually, well, it is protected, uh, but I guess the keys were already setting in there, so I didn't need it. Uh, and so once we flip over to that, uh, we have basic configuration, uh, basic, uh, <laughs> basic authentication. I can't talk today. Uh, and so uh, that package did get dropped in there uh, as well when we pushed it up. Uh, but just to show you, uh, the, the credentials are actually managed inside of uh, the config file. So um, I'm not using this in production anywhere. I probably wouldn't use that username and password if I was. Uh, but uh, that's one of the additional modifications that's come with that. So let's do this. Let's do a Chaco upgrade, uh, one password, uh, minus Y, again, minus source. Uh, we're going to that internal server. So we can just internal server running out of time. Uh, and so we're going to let that upgrade. And we're going to show you one more thing. 
and then we're going to flip over to questions. All right, so that's getting upgraded. And so now, uh, if we take a look at everything we have installed, and we'll actually do the include programs so you can see that as well. Lots of stuff being managed with Chaco. A couple things not. So what we would do is run Chaco sync, right? And that's going to go through those additional things and bring those under management. So everything is now going to be managed with chocolatey. And so then I get that packaging, and I can take that back. All right, so we're getting ready to flip over to questioning. If you have questions, line up right there. All right, and so uh, this is you. This is you on chocolatey. Any questions? OK, um, real quick. So uh, dependencies in the, there's different naming conventions, right? I didn't understand what was happening, because <clears throat> you go and you install some package, and there's like three or four different packages with different names, command line, not command line. Oh, you're thinking about the, the dependency repository. Thing. Yeah. yeah, the community repository. So I didn't understand what, if you could just explain <laughs> what the names are and what sure. they mean and all that. So there's uh, install. Uh, a lot of times on a community repository, you're going to see a package. Uh, it's good, really good for the naming, so you don't have to think, is this a dot install? Is this a dot portable? Uh, when there are multiples available, that's typically the convention. They'll have that meta package that installs the install, and then they'll have a portable package as well. So you'll have both of those. So I've only played with it a little bit <clears throat> with the, the free version or whatever. So if I was going to try and get this internally to, to have them tested, is there a way to test drive the... Yeah, business? absolutely. I was getting ready to mention that. So okay. if you do want to trial chocolatey for business... Yeah, um, I, we definitely would want yeah. to do that. Uh, reach out at this address, and uh, you'll be able to do that. Uh, you can also come find me afterwards when we start getting that figured out. Hey, uh, I just want to say thanks. Uh, we already use Chocolatey Open Source in production, and it's been fantastic. Awesome. Um, one thing I did see, um, you talked about crappy installers. Yeah, uh, yeah. Ones that will say it's a tiny binary, it goes out somewhere in the internet, grab something else. Oh, uh, that's even more fun. So Are we talking about Visual Studio? <laughs> I'm not naming any names here. <laughs> they but, fixed that, by the way. <laughs> OK. Uh, but for something like that, does Chocolatey have a solution? Uh, yes. Um, you have to probably pre-download some of that or repackage. So um, your options there, uh, and in this, uh, I was trying to bring up, uh, let's get this a little bigger so we can see this. There's a, an exercise at the very bottom of this that uh, uses that technical term, Creptastic installers. Yeah. Highly technical. but. Uh, that one's coming. Uh, we are trying not to use something that's already out there because we want to protect the innocent. Well, they're not innocent, but try not to, to name any names there. Um, there are ways to do that. And so you can use MSI repackaging uh, to bring everything in and then just uh, do the MSI repackaging. Or you could do uh, auto hockey and some of that. Uh, one of the things on the business side, we actually have support services. So you can engage with our support team. They can actually provide that packaging back. So lots of options.